Chapter 14 Forward to the Past The past lies just ahead. Transaction Sometimes we hear a random song that suddenly reminds us of times in our life when we were happy or we will catch the fleeting edge of a feeling we had when we were full of hope and life felt, if not like a holiday, then at least like the preparation for one. In these moments we feel a wave of nostalgia for what has been lost. It is sad to know that these moments were somewhere in the past and we can never return to them. Are these moments really lost forever? In the foreword I promised to reveal the meaning of the words forward to the past toward the end of this book. Now, the time has come to fulfill this promise. Transurfing has already presented you with more than a few remarkable insights. You are probably intrigued as to what I will share with you this time. All tricks of time travel are distinctly limited to the realm of science fiction. Despite the fact that, theoretically, physics does not exclude the possibility of time travel, its physical application is still shrouded in doubt. Moving through time does indeed seem unrealistic, and yet, it all depends on your perspective. It is like the model of the two-dimensional beings on a flat surface, who cannot see where the third dimension could be. From the point of view of fourth-dimensional space, our three-dimensional space also looks like a flat surface. The rational mind would say, all these theoretical models are just abstractions, but I know what I see. There is much in transurfing that seems incredible, and yet I do not call you to believe the principle of transurfing. I urge you to test them out. Of course, this will require your intention, some effort, and patience because the results will not be immediately obvious. In the majority of cases, outer intention works slowly and barely noticeably. It might be difficult for you to believe that this mysterious, invisible force exists and acts in a way unseen by the eye, particularly if you are still just listening to it and have not yet tried to apply the principles of transurfing in practice. The moment has now come for you to see your movement through the alternative space with your own eyes. You will see that you are capable of moving through time, both forwards and backwards. It will not be like the time travel they depict in science fiction movies, for we are only concerned with the shape of reality. This time, you will not have to wait for the results of outer intention. You will see the results straight away with your own eyes. It is no trick. Neither does it involve experiments with moving into the astral plane or the dream space. For a few moments, you will really feel movement in time and space. In practice, the process comes down to a simple, single action. Transaction, which consists of three elements. To carry out the first element, you must remember your central meridians. If you have already been doing the energy exercises, you should be familiar with the feel of the meridians. You start by running scanning on your body, relaxing any tension in the muscles. Then picture your energy moving in the rising and descending currents along your spine. A useful method to activate your energy fountains quickly is to imagine that two arrows run horizontally from the center of your body, extending in opposite directions. One points forward and the other backwards. The arrows extend 20 to 30 centimeters or more from the body. Now, picture both arrows turning at the same time. The front arrow turns upwards and the arrow at the back turns downwards until they are in a vertical position to the spine. You will immediately feel a boost in the flow of energy. 
You can practice this exercise either standing still or when you are walking. It is as if you are turning a key that switches on the central energy currents. There is no need to turn the arrows into fountains or to bring them together into a sphere. The important thing is to imagine being permeated by the flow of energy. It does not matter if you cannot actually feel the energy moving through you. A real sense of this will come with practice. Do this exercise when you are going somewhere or simply out on a walk. It will give you a feeling of lightness and relaxation. Turning the key is the first element of transaction. You can apply this exercise at any time that you need to quickly enter a more relaxed state. Try turning the key many times during the day, particularly when something is troubling you. You will notice straight away how the key releases tension. We are constantly carrying problems around with us, some small, some large, and the weight of our problems is automatically reflected in our muscles. When you are walking along and catch yourself thinking about something unpleasant, troublesome, or worrying, remember the key and turn it. You will feel a wave of relief as your muscles relax. It is good to get into the habit of turning the key as many times as possible during the course of your day. Then, you will always have a way of releasing and cleansing the energy of intention from the excess potential that brings you down. Consider the exercise the key to the conditioning box that oppressive circumstances like to lock you up in. It will not for you of importance but it will considerably ease the process of release on an energetic and a physical level. The second element of transaction is to visualize the target slide. Once you have turned the key, picture your target slide. Do not forget to imagine yourself inside the slide rather than watching it like a scene in a film. See yourself in a situation where the goal has already been achieved. To connect yourself with the slide, imagine what you would be feeling if you were living it in reality. Touch the scene with your hands. Imagine the sounds, smells, or any other sensations that easily come to you. Turn the slide in your thoughts for a minute or more. The transaction process is most effective if you practice it when you are relaxed and walking in a familiar place. You can look to the side, but in order to focus more clearly on the slide, it is better to lightly hold your gaze somewhere on the ground, just in front of you. Once you can more or less clearly see yourself in the slide, gaze ahead of you with a look of conscious awareness. Do not think or analyze anything. Just take in, with clear sight, whatever you see ahead of you and further into the distance. Clear sight is the third and final element of transaction. For a few seconds there will appear to be a change in nuances of the scenery. When you look at a familiar view with clear sight, you will notice that, although the picture is basically the same, there is something new about it, as if some new, yet barely perceptible hue has been added. It will be as if you had seen it before, somewhere. Not the specific details of the scene, but a certain feeling, mood, or aftertaste. A hue. You might, for example, look at a house that you have seen many times before, but, on this occasion, notice its color or lighting and understand that somewhere in different circumstances you have experienced something similar. In some cases you might have a distinct feeling that you know the scene from something that has happened in the past. You will no doubt have already come across the bizarre effect of when a feeling from the past 
suddenly streams up into your conscious memory. This is not a memory of the past, so much as a feeling from the past, a déjà vu. We experience the déjà vu effect quite often. It is just that we do not always notice it because we accept situations at face value. In other words, we are sleeping through a daydream. Transaction, on the other hand, enables you to notice how the world is changing before your very eyes. You may experience a vague sense of something familiar, or the opposite, sense the appearance of a new, unfamiliar hue. So, what is really happening in these moments? The material realization of a layer of your world is moving in the alternative space. Essentially, what you are seeing is a change in the shades of the scenery in the stage set. As you know, different sectors in the alternative space have different scripts and scenery. Depending on their relative distance from one another, the differences between the sectors may be more or less pronounced. As a rule, the movement of material realization takes place evenly and, for this reason, barely noticeably. You will not perceive the movement, just as we do not perceive the movement of the minute hand on small clocks. Dramatic changes in shade are only felt when there is a sharper shift from one lifeline to another. This is also when you begin to see signs that clearly draw your attention. During the transaction process, visualizing the slide strengthens the force of the wind of intention. In these moments, the quality of your thought energy significantly differs from the frequencies of your current lifeline. The turning of the key strengthens the energy that programs your thoughts and, as a result, the movement of material realization through the sectors accelerates. Clear sight attunes you to waking up and capturing the moment of change. Clear sight enables you to perceive the changing shades in the scenery for the short moments that the gust of wind lasts. The transaction exercise should be performed dispassionately in the same manner that you would clean your teeth or brush your hair. You might not get it straight away, like riding a bicycle. We cannot ignore the fact that, during the process of transaction, you touch on outer intention, that elusive power that cannot be controlled. I advise that you do not get too hung up about it, if the transaction exercise does not work straight away. It will work. Make your attempts spontaneous. Do not try too hard. Do not strain to achieve the desired effect or place too much importance on the technique itself. You might happen upon a completely different technique that works for you. Do what feels right and comfortable and practice lightly at odd moments during the day. The less important you make the transaction exercise, the better the results will be. As long as you do not take it too seriously or try too hard, it should come easily. You might think that if you repeat the transaction often, the process of moving towards your goal will be rapidly accelerated. And you would be right. The problem is that you cannot always consistently perform the transaction exercise impeccably, i.e dispassionately, because the old habit of desire spoils things. If you set to burdening yourself with a transaction exercise, you will be expressing the powerful excess potential of the desire to get a result as quickly as possible. Potential will also be created if you become absorbed with the necessity to act and put pressure on yourself to do the transaction. Necessity is also an excess potential, which is why I always urge you to simply enjoy the process of visualizing your target slide rather than making demands on yourself. The potentials of desire and necessity 
drain the energy of intention to such an extent that there can be no gust of wind and without the wind of intention the transaction will not work. The desire to see results is particularly great in the initial stages and so I would recommend keeping a look out for desire. As soon as you catch yourself desiring to see a result, take a break and begin again later. Likewise, if you find yourself tensing up because you are trying really hard to fulfill the transaction perfectly, leave it and try again later. Only practice the transaction exercise from time to time out of curiosity and with the aim of enjoying it. Do not take the transaction exercise too seriously. Its only purpose is to enable you to see the movement of the force of material realization in the alternative space. Of all the transurfing exercises, most attention should be given to running the target slide and visualizing the current link in the transfer chain stream into realized pathways of reality. Outer intention works whether you see it or not. It is just that, now, you have a kind of porthole into the alternative space and the opportunity to observe your movement there. It is quite impressive. You will not be disappointed. Shades in the scenery. Now, we shall take a more detailed look at what you are really seeing as a result of transaction. It all sounds so unlikely that doubts will naturally arise. Might it be the effect of some kind of illusion created by the workings of human perception? Where is the guarantee that what you are seeing is the change in shades of scenery as you shift from one sector to another? As I have already said, and as you know yourself, in dreams we see the external appearance of people differently from normal. When you see your reflection in a mirror, the face you see is yours, and at the same time, someone else's. Familiar scenes take on a totally different look. You recognize the streets and the houses, but they look different. The real world also changes with time. Trees grow, houses are painted different colors, and all these changes are natural. At the same time, the movement of material realization through the alternative space does not follow a single straight line. So, how can you distinguish the scenery of one line from that of another? You could say that this would be impossible if it was not for the old invention of photography. Look through an old photo album. If you look at the background view captured in the photographs, you will not be able to distinguish differences in the shades of the scenery in different lifelines because the appearance of a physical location changes anyway due to natural causes. There is a more reliable method of distinguishing between lifelines. Compare the faces of the people in the photographs taken at different times. You would expect the faces to change in a linear fashion as a reflection of the aging process. And yet, what you are seeing is something else. A person's appearance significantly differs in different photographs, and yet the change is not purely linear. Even if you discard the effect of different hairstyles and compare photographs of the same person from the middle of their life when the face has not greatly mature or aged, you can see tangible differences. You are looking at the same face, but it is somehow different, and it is nothing to do with getting older, changing one's hair, or even expressing different emotions. The face seems to have taken on a different countenance, having acquired a different quality. This is the difference in the shades of the scenery. You already know that people change. You just might not have paid particular attention to characteristic differences in shade. 
Leaf through old photo albums, and you will be surprised. In some people, the difference can be so pronounced that when you meet them several years later, you do not even recognize them. If you compare photographs of yourself taken at qualitatively different periods of your life, you will notice significant differences in shade. You will begin to get a picture of what your realization looks like in qualitatively different sectors of the alternative's space. Surely, the photographs in the album must also take on different shades whilst you are moving through sectors of the alternative's space? Indeed they do, but it is almost impossible to catch changing shades and nuances in basic objects. If you practice transaction, focusing your clear sight on a bed or cupboard, you will not notice any change. This is why I recommend practicing the transaction exercise outside, where changes can be perceived, rather than in a very simple environment. A lifeline is a chain of sectors that are relatively uniform in quality. The sceneries of a single lifeline are also relatively uniform. When the layer of your world shifts to another lifeline, there is a change in scenery. Depending on the extent and quality of the difference between the lines, changes in the scenery will manifest either as nuances and shades, or significant transformation. In any case, you will observe a qualitative change in shade. So, where is the time travel I mentioned in all of this? When we move along lifelines in an organic manner, we swim synchronously with time, as with the current of a river. Material realization proceeds through the alternative space like a roll of film in a projector, and it is this movement that we perceive as time. In order to move relative to time, you would have to move forwards or backwards against the flow at a faster speed than the flow itself. It would be as if a picture in the film has suddenly started moving along the film roll. In this sense, time travel is genuinely possible. In other words, you cannot move forward or backwards in time within the same lifeline. This would be a contradiction of the laws of cause and effect. However, theoretically, it is possible to move through time between different lifelines. Transurfing does not claim to have the answer to how this can be done. Besides, we are looking at time travel here from a slightly different angle. Why is it that a feeling of the past sometimes bleeds through during transaction. The following gives a rough explanation of this phenomenon. From early childhood, the heart intuitively moves towards its goals through the necessary doors. In childhood, we are still on lifelines that would lead us to our goals. Maybe you had a childhood dream. Or maybe you were not aware of what you really wanted but your heart will have known nonetheless. And yet, in life, we are more influenced by destructive pendulums than we are by the dictates of the heart, to say nothing of the long line of negative branches which everyone passes through due to a tendency for negativism. All this taken into account, you gradually shifted further and further away from those initial lines that led to your goal. By performing transaction, you are being shifted in the opposite direction and arrive at a lifeline where you have been previously, only now your position in time has changed. That section of the former lifeline that you may have traveled along is now in the past, but you have returned to the line itself. Every line has its specific inherent features, tastes, and tones. It is these shades that you experience in the moment of clear sight towards the end of the transaction. Do not be confused by other differences such as the way a house looks in the morning and how it looks in the evening. 
the contrast between different lifelines are something quite different. You will know what I mean by this when you have experienced that feeling. This is the return to the past that we are talking about by going forward to previous lifelines. It might not be quite as exotic as what you were expecting, but it is real. Imagine what a huge detour you would have made by straying from the path and wandering around the forest for so long. However, now is not the time for regret. Now is the time to delight in the fact that you, once again, are gradually returning to your own path, for the majority of people never return. You may not necessarily experience the shades of a line you have been on before if the path to your goal lies via new lines you have not previously traveled through. In this case, a return to former lifelines happens rarely or not at all. Lifelines in the alternative space are deeply intertwined and indeed, there is no need for us to know how exactly transurfing works. At times, you may think that you recognize the shades of the scenery and, at other times, everything will appear new. It may occur to you as you observe a familiar view that there is something new to the scene, particularly a tone or shade. I would like to emphasize that these new details are not the kind of change that you could perceive without doing the transaction exercise. They are new, subtle tones, styles, moods, meanings, themes, or fleeting feelings. You will understand exactly what I mean when you try it. You can do it. The only thing is to avoid trying too hard. The mind can spoil everything with its addiction to control. If you catch yourself straining to perceive the shades, it is better to pause and come back to the exercise later once the desire to get an immediate result has faded. Remember the rules of the transaction exercise. It will not work if you are in any way tense. Believe me when I say that you will experience the result easily and naturally if you just lift your little finger of outer intention. The opposite is also true. Your efforts will be transformed into the futile straining of inner intention if you try to force a result. If no change in shades is noticed during the transaction exercise, it means that the quality of the current line already meets the necessary quality of the visualization. This indicates that you are transmitting the energy of the current lifeline and that your goal lies ahead on this same line. Whatever the case, if you do the transaction exercise, from time to time you will notice a transformation reflected in the shades of the scenery. Shades are not only perceived in familiar views and landscapes. Even when your clear sight rests on a scene you are seeing for the first time, you may experience a fleeting sense of something long forgotten or a sense of something fresh and new. There is a difference between the feeling of experiencing something new and observing something that is unfamiliar to you. When you look at an unfamiliar view, you simply state as fact that you are seeing the place for the first time. You do not notice anything peculiar about it. During transaction, you will have the distinct feeling that something new has appeared in the scene that was not there a few seconds ago you will definitely feel it. When you do perceive the shades, you will be amazed at how real they are. Admit it, listening to this book, you probably are not fully convinced by the reality of the alternative space and lifelines. When you do see what I am talking about with your own eyes, do not be afraid. There is no mysticism and neither is it purely a result of the nature of human perception as you might think. Soon, you will discover other signs indicative of the shift to new lifelines that cannot be explained solely by the nature of perception. 
you might begin to feel that the way other people treat you has changed for the better without any evident reason or that certain day-to-day -day problems have disappeared. Generally, you will notice that certain attributes of everyday life have changed, although you cannot see any particular reason why this should be so. For example, a clock that stopped working many years ago has unexpectedly started working again. Under normal circumstances, clocks stop working due to a natural clogging up of their moving parts. If you clean them, they will work fine. However, very often clocks, household appliances, and electrical equipment will suddenly stop working for no apparent reason, or break down when their owners lose a state of balance due to stress or conflict. The breakdown of equipment is not caused by excess potential, for this energy is too minor by comparison and is not directed differentially such that it could cause any kind of mechanical change. The energy connected with negative experiences induces a shift to a lifeline where balance is disturbed, life has lost its peaceful flow, and where there are deviations from the norm. Nothing appears to have changed, and yet something is not right. Something seems unsettled and awry. It is as if the scenery of the stage set is the same, the lighting is different. The transparent air has become clouded with a pall of dust, or the water is muddied. These slight changes are capable of affecting sensitive household appliances and other complex technology, for which a pall of dust is a tangible phenomenon. There is a certain type of person whose life always seems to be falling apart. People like this are always off balance due to being too absent-minded, excitable, tense, or worried. Sensitive appliances that find themselves on the muddy lifelines of these poor individuals fail. So, if your clock has suddenly started working again, it suggests that you have managed to shift to purer lifelines. Do not be overly concerned if you cannot get your clock to work at all. It might just need to be repaired. Now, you know that as well as traveling through the alternative space, you are also, in a sense, traveling through time. You cannot return to the past, but it is possible to retrieve that free feeling of the new hope and happiness that was lost as a result of moving down a chain of negative branches. Earlier on in the book, we talked about why the feeling of freshness in life fades with time. Moving towards your goal is like returning to the past, when ice cream was delicious, hope was bright, and life was still joyful and promising. Do not despair. The past lies just ahead. Gliding. Finally, we have arrived at the moment when I can reveal the answer to the Guardian's riddle. The statement that everyone has the absolute freedom to choose their own destiny is only a riddle until you clearly understand the origins of bondage. Based on all that has been said so far in this book, I can now share the answer with you. Freedom is yours when you end the battle. As you can see, the answer is short and simple, like the alchemist's secret on the emerald tablet. If I had told you the answer to the riddle at the very beginning of the book, you would not have understood all its implications, would you? Our dependence lies in taking part in the battle imposed on us. Once you wake up from the daydream, once you stop being hard on yourself and end the battle with yourself and the world, nothing can hold you down. The battle will continue, but without your participation, and you will be free to go wherever you wish and choose anything you desire. The world is a mirror that reflects your relationship to it. When you are discontent with the world, it turns away from you. When you fight the world, 
it fights you back. When you end the battle, the world meets you halfway. From birth, the pendulums show you your place in life. They install a template of the worldview you must accept, explain the rules of the game, assign you a role and with that, you are locked up in a box of conditioning. At the same time, the pendulums falsely declare you independent. Their declaration states that you can choose. You are hung on puppet strings and allowed to go free, to desire whatever you want, and to achieve it in any way you see fit. You begin to pull at the strings, working towards your goals, but are unsuccessful. Then, you are made to understand that, if you want to win your place in the sun, you will have to fight even harder, both with yourself and with the world. This is the pendulum's rule. Fight and do as I do. The only freedom you exercise is the right to take part in the battle. For this too is a choice, and you always get what you choose. That is an immutable law. A person can never beat a pendulum in battle. They may perhaps receive a prize, but even this is achieved by a mere handful of individuals. The pendulum's objective is to conceal your true freedom. No one can force you to take part in the battle, but they can instill the belief in our minds that no other choice exists. In a sense, they are right. There can be no other choice until you stop clinging to the strings of importance. To gain your real freedom, you must abandon importance. Do not attribute excess meaning to anything, either inside yourself or outside in the world. In the majority of cases, it is enough to wake up and consciously change your relationship. We are all dreaming, mechanically playing out our roles. The depth of our dream is likewise proportional to the meaning we attribute to the attributes of the game, which make us prisoners of our own attachment to importance. Is not trying to change your relationship to something just another part of the same battle? No. You battle with yourself when you try to control your emotions. Now that you know the nature of the pendulum's game, you can consciously change your relationship to it without being hard on yourself. In this way, you make a choice for freedom from the battle. Now, you can decide the rules of the game yourself. Your game with the pendulum revolves around breaking the pendulum's game rules. Then, the battle is transformed into a ridiculous fight with a golem. It is as if you realize that it is all a daydream. By distancing yourself from the stage and watching from the auditorium, you suddenly understand that it is entirely up to you to decide whether you want to continue participating in the battle or simply take what is yours. Of course, you will not be able to tear off the strings of importance straight away. You cannot just decide to be rid of all your excess values and complexes just like that. Neither should you set about getting rid of them, for that just sets up another battle. The strings of importance will drop off by themselves when you stop battling. Any importance that can be consciously dropped should be. Anything that cannot be consciously dropped can be transformed through action. Turn your target slide round in your mind, visualize the process, and calmly place one foot in front of the other in the direction of your goal. This is your proactive step. Rejecting the game also counts as action. Give yourself and the rest of the world the opportunity to be as they are. There is no need to change yourself or fight with life. As soon as you turn your back on the battle, your freedom will become more tangible 
with every passing day. It is not possible to be rid of the burden of the problems that you have accumulated over the course of your life in one fell swoop. However, by observing the principle of coordination, you will make your way out of the mesh of wind-fallen trees onto a clear, even road. There is no guarantee that everything will go smoothly at the outset. You can expect to be provoked by pendulums, obstacles, and disappointment. The main thing is not to lose heart or sink into despair. Everything will work out with time. For now, you have a powerful technique at your fingertips for managing your own destiny. If you have felt enlightened by the insight that you can control the events in your life, if you have sufficient confidence and the necessary enthusiasm, you can also expect to come up against unpleasant surprises. You are likely to get a slap from one force or another, depending on the intensity of your confidence and emotional high, as balanced forces will respond to your excess potential. Do not succumb to the temptation of imagining yourself to be the puppeteer or director-producer of the play called My Life. Of course, you are a director, but solely in relation to your own life fate. You are not the only one acting in the play called My Life. And so, the slightest expression of arrogance and self-importance will create excess potential. You might think that you do not have a high opinion of yourself at all, but no one is perfect. You have received the key to an extremely powerful force and so, the slightest deviation from integrity and impeccability will have tangible consequences. Ideally, the awareness that every individual is the master of their own fate should be quite obvious. Imagine that you were given a document that certified your right to purchase a newspaper at any stall across the city. The document would hardly fill you with any excitement because you have this right anyway, irrespective of any document. Would you get upset if you could not buy a paper at one particular newsstand? No, you would simply go on to the next or forget about buying a paper after all. Your attitude towards your new ability to control the events of your life should be no different to your attitude towards buying a newspaper. There is one more thing I must warn you about. Transurfing is not designed with the intention of causing any other person harm. It is possible to use transurfing to direct hostile intent towards a person or group of people that you wish to take vengeance on. But doing so would entail serious consequences. I really do not recommend that you practice black magic. Even if it seems to you that the retribution is entirely justified, do not get involved. If you have not been able to resist sending negativity towards your enemy, you can expect to receive an initial warning. You will see a sign. If then you do not stop, you will be punished. Never forget that we are all guests in this world. The conditions of freedom are that we get to choose, but we do not have the right to change anything or anyone. As you know, many ancient civilizations perished, leaving nothing but shards of physical construction, such as the Egyptian pyramids and the muffled echoes of some secret mystical knowledge. Those people who mastered the power of outer intention became too powerful and were not only punished, but totally destroyed by balanced forces. There have been many civilizations like Atlantis, and every time the people mastered the power of outer intention, they forgot that they were just guests in this world. And you know what happens to guests that push the limits. They get kicked out. You should also be particularly wary of boasting to your friends and family. 
If you make claims aloud that you will get what is rightfully yours, your chances of success will decrease significantly. It is one of those cases where confidence must grow into inner confidence. When you know in yourself that you will achieve your goal, you do not disturb the balance. When you carry this knowledge inside, it becomes a thing of itself. However, if you declare to others that you will acquire something you do not yet have, you create excess potential. Then, balanced forces become involved, aimed at eliminating the excess potential. One should conclude, therefore, that it is better to act with some humility and keep silent. Naturally, once you have achieved your goal, you can kick up your heels, but without foolish extremes or euphoria, otherwise, balanced forces will confiscate your newfound toy. Transform your joy into the intention of celebration. Use your right to choose and allow yourself the luxury of perceiving the life you are currently disenchanted with as a celebration. This will give you a real, rather than an illusory cause for celebration. For then you have the hope of acquiring freedom. You will experience a quiet delight knowing that you are moving towards your goal and this will keep the feeling of celebration close. Even balanced forces will not be able to darken your quiet delight. In accordance with the principle of coordination, if you perceive life as a celebration, whatever is happening, it will become one. Now, there is no need to continue battling. You will get what is yours in the end. By turning your back on the battle, you tear off the strings and acquire your true freedom without losing the prop they gave. The new prop is the alternative's flow. Remember, that your choice will be fulfilled. Attune your thoughts to your target line, and then the flow will be directed towards your goal. There is no force capable of preventing you on the path towards your goal if you go with the flow, stay balanced, and observe the principle of coordination. You are no longer a small paper boat on the wave of circumstance, and no puppet in the hands of pendulums. You have a sail, unity of heart and mind. You have a helm, your choice. You glide through the alternative space on the wind of outer intention. Summary. Turning the key releases tension and frees the energy of intention. Transaction. Turning the key visualization, and clear, focused sight. Transaction enables you to see the changing shades in the scenery. Do not give the transaction technique excess meaning. Carry out transactions in a relaxed manner. Do not push yourself to do the transaction exercise too often. The target slide and visualization process are quite sufficient. The only purpose of transaction is to enable you to perceive movement through the alternatives space. Moving towards your goal refreshes the layer of your world. The world is a mirror that reflects your relationship to it. You win your freedom by ending the battle.